The traditional idea of the taxi is a romantic one. Just like bartenders or janitors, you picture a cool professional that might technically be a service worker, but in reality are actually therapists to whom you can confess all your sins and receive sage advice. Sure, these days Uber and Lyft are eroding the days of the taxi, but images of yellow-clad sedans driving busy city streets are still iconic. And yet, as is always the case in real life, the reality never matches the myth. Most taxi drivers don't give a shit about about you or any of their other passengers. Night Call is just as disappointing an experience. The idea of the game full of promise and potential, yet the product itself only makes you wish you walked home instead. Nightcall is a visual novel in which you play a taxi driver. Surprise! At the start of the game, you were shot by a serial killer who had a previously arranged date with your last passenger. After several weeks in the hospital, you're back in your yellow people carrier. Or rather, black and white, because Nightcall takes its noir murder mystery setting very seriously. At least, I think that's what happens. It's hard to tell given the videos in this game are super low resolution. That's not me or my editing software doing that to these videos. They really do look that grainy and pixelated for some reason. You've got a messed up past, one that's told to you throughout the story, but suffice to say, the police lieutenant in charge of the case, a walking techno-nonsense hard-ass with a sardonic sense of humor cliché, is more than happy to throw you in jail as the culprit if you don't help her out. Seems pretty sketchy, but okay, whatever. The game is set in Paris, so I guess French police officers must regularly force everyday citizens to do their job for them. She doesn't even have a partner. Your job, as her confidential informant, is to talk to passengers and gather whatever they might know about the killer. You also have to talk to your own contacts as well and put the clues together yourself to give the police lady the killer's identity in just six days. Then you have to get a confession out of him. The concept is absurd for any number of reasons. You're pretty much working this case by yourself, having to narrow down the killer between a seemingly random list of five suspects. You've got to go all over Paris picking up passengers, hearing what they have to say about the killer, because for some reason you can never directly ask them about it, and talking to your friends who all seem to have jobs that facilitate them helping your case with clues and information. The problem is, you have to do all of this during your shift, which is from 2 in the morning to 6 a.m. You can't do this during the day when you're off work, you have to do it exclusively during those four hours. I don't know how this dude managed to land a job that only works four hours a day, but I envy him. Or maybe I don't. Money is something you have to worry about in Night Call, at least theoretically. Meaning you have to decide to pursue the case, or just do your job and get paid. Again, at least theoretically. This works by either ferrying passengers from place to place and just kind of ignoring the investigation aspect of it, or going out of your way to search for contacts, talk to any potential suspects about what they were doing that night, or just talking to random gas station attendants and getting the newspaper for some reason. It works as you'd expect. You get basic fare from your passengers, as well as any tips for doing a good job, and you lose money from gas, taxes, uh, some kind of taxi fee from your boss, all these different things. But in truth, collecting money didn't seem to matter all that much. I always ended up losing money every day, no matter how many passengers I took on or however many tips I got, but I started out with so much money that by the end of the game, I still had plenty left over anyway. And there are so few sources to pursue outside your passengers that you'll have plenty of time to investigate them and pick up passengers anyway. Your choices in this regard don't really matter, and that's something that applies to the whole game. Your passengers will often come to you with stories of their lives, and you can choose how much you talk to them and what you say. This is where Night Call really shines, as the writing is absolutely fantastic. Every character you run into, and there must be 50 or so of them, each have their own personality, their own problems, their own little tics. They all feel like real people, and they've all got interesting stories to tell. There's this one lesbian couple who are looking for a sperm donor so they can have a child, but they're having trouble finding the right person. There are these two teenagers who ask you to finish their game of not Dungeons and Dragons with them after their other friend got in trouble. There's there's this one photojournalist who's going to help a rescue operation of migrants off the coast of Greece, and that's only just a few of them. Hearing these stories and being able to talk to these passengers and sometimes give them advice or help them out was great. I connected with almost everyone in the short amount of time I was driving them around. It's just a shame that there are a handful of passengers who completely break the tone of the game. Night Call is usually a pretty serious, hard-boiled kind of game, but every so often you'll pick up a passenger that's just completely off the walls batty, accompanied by a bizarre sound 
soundtrack change. We're talking Hideo Kojima levels of tonal whiplash here. A guy dressed up as Santa Claus who's strongly hinted at being a real Santa. A woman who's been writing a poem for 11 years and tells you to drive random places all over the city. And an even more bizarre time-traveling woman who randomly shows up in your cab from the radio. These don't make any sense, are completely unrelated to anything else in the game, and throw the entire narrative for a loop because they're just so out of place, and frankly, they're more annoying than funny anyway. But the real problem with Nightcall is the investigation itself, the whole backbone of the game. To put it bluntly, it's a confusing, uninteresting mess. When I first started playing the game, I thought it was one of the worst I'd ever seen at informing the player of what they're supposed to be doing. It was only after playing for a few hours that I realized there's just not much to do anyway. After your shift of talking to contacts and taking passengers, you go home to this board that you set up with five photos of some random people on the top and a bunch of random clues underneath, some of which have yellow string linking clues with photos. The game doesn't tell you what any of this stuff means or what you're supposed to do with it. It took me several hours to realize that the photos up top are supposed to be suspects, not the killer's victims, despite clues saying victim one or victim four with strings attached to each photo. You can move clues around and you can middle click to unhighlight something, a feature the game doesn't tell you about and I only found out by accident, but that's it. After day six, the police lieutenant calls you and asks to give them a suspect and you just have to look at the clues you've gathered and determine it based off that. That's all there is. You, you get little clues like this, you look at them and then you pick somebody. I was massively overestimating how involved the investigation side of this game was, but can you blame me? This was pitched as a murder mystery investigation kind of game, but the actual investigative side of things is so paltry, I don't see how they could say that in good faith. So for my entire first play through the game, I was thinking I was somehow missing some kind of big gameplay feature, like I, I was supposed to, I don't know, rearrange the clues in some kind of chronologic order, or maybe throw out ones that weren't right, or somehow link clues together, maybe talk to the victim's families, or the suspects, or something, I don't know, anything. But the whole investigation is a lot less involved than that. It really is just a case of gathering as many clues as you can, then picking the suspect at the end based on those. It really is just a case of being handed clues, then picking the right suspect at the end. That's it. Not knowing what I was doing or having any clue what I was looking at, I naturally picked the wrong suspect at the end of my first playthrough. True to her word, the police arrested me and it was game over. I had to start the entire game over again to give it a second chance. It was this second playthrough that really underscored the major flaws of Nightcall. This game is super repetitive. Everything in my second playthrough was exactly the same as the first, right up to picking the suspect at the end. Same list of five suspects, same clues, same passengers having the same conversations, same sources giving me the same information. I tried to pick different dialogue options, but it didn't matter because once you drop a passenger off, you'll probably never see them again or learn what happened to them. You just enter their lives for a brief period and that's it. Okay, I get that's what happens with real taxi drivers, but what's the point of having dialogue options and being able to change people's minds if you can't see the aftermath? After ignoring the second half of passengers and just clicking through every dialogue conversation until I got to the end, I managed to figure out the right suspect this time around. I looked up some YouTube videos and apparently it's the same person every single time, just to add to the repetition. I'm gonna show you who that is and talk about the end game because in case you couldn't tell, I don't think this game is worth your time. So when you finally do figure out the right person, the police lieutenant asks you to pick him up, she bugs your cab, and asks you to get a confession out of him. So I picked him up, he of course knew what was going on, and then shot and killed me because I wouldn't take him to some park. Game over, load from the last save. Yes, you have to pick exactly the right dialogue choices with this guy, or he'll kill you. Once again, your choices don't matter, and the game is super repetitive. Why give us dialogue options if there's only one right path? I don't know. So I loaded up the last save again, had to go through the last day again, and this time I took him to the park where he shot himself. The end. How riveting. What a... What a conclusive, impactful ending that was. My first playthrough took about three and a half hours, but I'm a kind of slow reader, so it might be a little quicker for you. Even quicker if you decide you want to quit like I wanted to on more than one occasion. It probably would have been even quicker if it weren't for all the bugs. There was this one where the game froze after dropping off a passenger, another time the game froze where the little text box asking you to confirm picking up a passenger didn't come up, and then a third time when, somehow, my character drove off the map and I couldn't select any passengers or move any. Anywhere. In all three cases, I had to restart the game. 
and I don't know if this is a bug or just bad design, but for some of the longer dialogue options, the text goes off the screen and you can't read it. There are a few other little things I haven't talked about yet, like different cases and different difficulty options, but honestly, it's all so half-assed, I'm gonna follow the game's lead and not really bother. There are four different cases that all have the exact same setup with the exact same passengers. It's just harder to get clues and there are different suspects. The different difficulty options don't really matter because they really only affect how much cash you get, which, again, is completely useless. Oh, and you can sometimes get newspapers, either from a passenger leaving one behind or buying one at a gas station, which also give you clues. But again, if you're getting solid clues out of a freaking newspaper, then the local police force really is total shit. I'm getting clues out of a random newspaper. Clues out of a newspaper. The police can't figure this out for themselves. I, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. I know this is a pretty short review for my standards, but honestly, Night Call is easily the most disappointing game I've played so far this year. It's... I, <laughs> I love murder mystery games a lot. I'll tolerate a lot when it comes to this genre. And I love narrative-driven games with good writing like this one. I'm a total sucker for them. I eat them up every chance I get. So that should tell you something when I say I do not like this game. After my first playthrough, I was thinking that, you know, maybe there's a good game buried under a terrible framework here. But going through it a second time and seeing the same conversations play out again and again, seeing how repetitive it is and not having any real agency, your choices not mattering, the wild shifts in tone, and the boring, utterly boring murder mystery investigation with its stupid plot full of incompetent police officers. I don't even think I can say that anymore. Sure, there's some good writing here with the conversations with passengers, but it's so shallow and vapid that it just doesn't matter. It's not worth hours of tedious boredom and bugs for three minutes of interesting conversation that doesn't go anywhere. I wrote a witty closing line that perfectly summarizes my feelings towards Nightcall, but unfortunately the line is bleeding off the side of the screen and my computer's bugged out so I have to restart it. But I can't because a clown's just walked in juggling sausages. I hate demolishing a game like that, but sometimes it's just gotta be done. 2019 has been a super disappointing year for indie games so far, but to be fair, it was always going to be hard to follow how great 2018 was. There are still a few promising looking games on the horizon this year, and you can bet I'll cover those as well. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.